Hello, this is Lam. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to use these colors and I'm going to make lilacs and hummingbird. First, I'm going to make a background, which is a very pale pastel background. I use various pale uh, pearl metallic colors and layer them with white and I'm just going to flip it real easy. Look at all those pale pink and pale green and lilac and and powder blue is so pretty and of course I want to make sure the blue is on the top to be a hint of sky and then I'm going to make the leaves and you know how I make leaves I layer different shades of green and gold and drizzle with white and then I am going to take on my mallet Pang, pang, pang. And I am doing different directions this time because I want the leaves to be kind of random. So I need to rotate the canvas around. And this way it looks more like a random bunch of lilac. And then I'm going to make the blossoms and i'm going to use one single q-tip wrap with saran wrap and sorry i can't show it very well with this camera angle because i am dotting the q-tip perpendicular to the canvas but the idea is really simple you just put colors down in a puddle like a different combination of colors and then cover it with some white and then just dot 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 in fast succession but of course not this fast this is very time lapse but you get the idea so i'm ju i'm just doing random bunches of them i use various shades of purple and white and then i'm using a little bit of pink as well and then I'm ju just dotting away. So when you put colors down and then drizzle some white on it and then you dot it like that, it's just like smashing them with a super tiny balloon. It creates a little bit of kind of a watercolor effect. That is really quite pretty if you look at it close up. And actually, I'm going to show you a close-up later. But here, I am just doing random bunches. And I am not following a, a reference photo or anything. I mean, it's, this is kind of representational, but it is still very loose. So I'm just putting bunches of lilac flowers wherever I see fit and I hope they look like flowers <laughs> to me they do see when I put them between the leaves I am careful so that they don't disturb the leaves too much and so that they look like they are you know like between the leaves but not like completely separated from them and then dotting away and uh, now here is close up and this is real time guys this is real time and see how see in that puddle the colors just emerges as the q-tip just dot away And look how pretty close up. And that's how they all look. See, now I'm going fast again. Again, time lapsing. Because this is really quite repetitive. Once you get the idea, and it's really easy. And it, this is actually a lot easier than 
say a balloon roll, a balloon kiss, because this is so small, it's easier to manipulate. And I put more pink on the top bunches, but my idea is that is uh, it is further up, so it receives more light, so the color is lighter. I don't know. It's just a thought. Now I am almost done with the flowers. Maybe a little bit more. But I really want to spend more time on the bird. And okay, just maybe a little bit more on the flowers. You know how I like to fuss with little things. Now get the shape a little bit better. Now here's the bird. This is where I want to put it. So I put a dot as the head, and then now I am doing the body. See, I use this teal turquoise color, metallic. And then there's a head and there's a body, and I need to connect them. So I dip a bamboo stick into the cup and just kind of draw it. Well, not draw it, just, you know, laying down some paint so that the head and body is connected. And then I want to make sure the body is in the right shape because there needs to be a tail that comes out of the body. And then there's a little... I'm marking out the position for the beak. This is not the beak, but it's where the beak is going to be. And then I'm getting the body in better shape. Okay, next, I'm still deciding what to do because this is only the second time I made a bird. I did a trial one the night before and this one, I am um, filming it so I was kind of nervous. Now I use white to do the belly, it was just very simple line of white, nothing fancy. Because the belly area of the hummingbird is usually lighter in color. If not white, then it is yellow, you know, just some lighter color. And now... I'm going to add some colors. This is gold. Because most of the color feathers are actually between the belly and the side and then also around the neck. And of course the tail as well. Okay, now I'm going to do some pink and I'm dragging it up the neck to the top of the head. And then some pearl purple. I think this is Decoax Pearl. Well, just any vibrant, you know, metallic purple will do. I just, I just love hummingbird feathers. They are so iridescent and so vibrant. So I'm trying to get that across. Okay, now it's. A little green so I have gold and I have pink and I have purple and I have green all metallic and now I'm just going to use the bamboo stick to create some feather like effect and actually right now I am starting to work on the tail and the difficult part 
of doing representational work in fruit art is just that it is so much harder to control, and there's a very, a relatively small margin of error, because in most, you know. In regular painting, you paint with a brush or paint with your finger, whatever. If you make a mistake, you can paint over it or you can correct it relatively easy. But here in fruit art, if you mess up something, I mean, it, you may not be able to fix it. So I was being extra careful and working slowly, taking my time. And carefully layering the colors, because as I said, the tail of a hummingbird is very vibrant and colorful as well. So I'm trying to make sure there's enough colors there to create interest. And then I just need to make them into feathers. See bamboo stick. I just, you know, lightly drag the bamboo stick so that the tail would look like feathers. Not that hard, right? No sweat. Well, easier said than done. But you get the idea. See, as long as you have in mind what kind of position and posture you want the hummingbird is, then you just need to, you know, just get the big shapes right, and then lay down the colors, and then. Drag the stick to create feathers. Now here I am doing the wings. Again, I'm laying down the paint a little bit at a time. Because the wings have more pointed angles than. Than the head and body, so I can't just put down a blob of paint. I have to really dot it out. Now this is the back wing, so it is thinner, and I'm just dragging it in to indicate the feathers. Then I'm using my fingers to measure out the other wing, and then I just line it with that same teal turquoise color. Yeah, and try to connect that to the body so that it doesn't look like two wings that are. Separated from the body, that won't work. Now, this is green, some metallic green, and then gold. Again, connected to the body. Now pink. So basically, I'm using the same color scheme as the neck. Now the purple. And more purple. See, this is actually the easiest and the fun part, just drawing out 
the colors, the feathers, I mean. See, I'm dragging out and then dragging in, dragging out, dragging in. making the feathers pointier so that they look more feathery. And also drag some of the white in to give it some more definition. body See the, there are feathers in the body too so I am mixing it up to indicate that now this is kind of random but that's what creates little feathers that are on the body and on the neck Just be careful not to mix it up to the point that it becomes muddy and loses, you know, completely loses definition. Now here I use a dropper a precision, those precision writer bottle to put out a dot of black as the eye. Now here, carefully drag out the beak because hummingbird has a very long and skinny beak. So, trying to drag it out, and this you have to be careful. You you cannot make it wiggly; it has to be straight. So here, the bird is ready. What do you think? I'm quite happy with it. So final torch, and this little painting is done. It's just a little. 11 by 14, I think. And I actually did this in May of 2020 and I completely forgot about it. I just, yesterday I saw the video again when I was cleaning up some of the old videos and I think I really need to share this. Look at this. I don't know if it, like all this have been done before. If it has, I am not aware of it. I haven't seen anyone do lilacs this way or do a hummingbird this way. So, yeah, so I just made this up. And I hope you like it. And this is a dry result. Look how vibrant the color is. Look how shiny. Isn't that a cute bird? And the details, very subtle details in the background. And the lilacs could be better. Next time I'll use better colors. But hey, this is the experiment. Thank you very much for watching. You have a great day. I'll see you next time. Thank you.